Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing in these little Chinese diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is motorhome install part two. In part one, I went through the actual installation of the heater in the motorhome, uh, particular areas that you might be able to install the motor, the, uh, the little heater, and cutting through the floor and, and uh, mounting the heater. In this video, I'd like to go through the electrical system, fuel system, and really bringing it all together and test running the um, heater. All right, get started. Okay, I'd like to talk about fuel hose now. Now, generally from the tank to the actual dosing pump itself, I use four millimeter fuel hose. Now this saves a lot of joins and it's not a problem because normally in most installs, the, the dosing pump and the fuel tank are roughly the same height. You don't have the dosing pump trying to suck up fuel to a great height. So I run this normal four millimeter fuel hose from the fuel tank to the shutoff valve, to the filter, and then to the dosing pump. But from the pump, you should only ever use hard nylon, a narrow bore hard nylon. And as you can see, this is also four millimeter. So, so what's going on? This is four mil. This is four millimeter. Yet this one will go inside this one. Well, basically, and there are a couple of exceptions. Hose like this or this is measured on the inside. And so they normally call it a nominal bore. So the hose is measured on the inside, but tube like this is measured on the outside. Now, for instance, this here is some stainless steel tube. This is um, one inch stainless steel tube. It's measured on, on the outside. But this here is stainless steel pipe and it's measured on the inside. This here is 20 millimeter PVC pressure pipe and the measurement is on the inside. Now they normally talk about nominal bore so with the um, um, the pipes and that like this one here this is actually 22 millimeter so they're talking about 20 millimeter but they're talking about a 20 millimeter nominal bore. Now for instance this here is tube and this here is pipe and they're both the same size, but this one will go inside that one. So just recapping, in general, now there are exceptions, in general, if you've got um, hose or pipe, like garden hose or fuel hose or pressure pipe, it's measured on the inside and tube, like this or like this, is measured on the outside. Now the other thing talking about fuel hose, this particular fuel hose was supplied with a couple of the heaters and, and a few people have been getting this, it's a, it's a sort of a, a vinyl fuel hose. Now it was clear when I, when I first got it, but I left it connected to my test bench, my test heater, um, while I went away sailing for a, a two months. And when I came back with the diesel still in the line, now it got I must admit it got probably about two hours of afternoon sun. But in eight weeks, of two hours of sun with the diesel left in the line, the whole thing perished and just fell off. So whatever you do, don't use this cheap, nasty, um, clear fuel hose. Now as I say, when it comes with the heater, it comes clear. This is, this is what it went like after eight weeks and it all perished. So don't ever use this stuff. Um, if you can, on the pickup side, get yourself some good um, fuel hose but on the delivery side always use hard narrow bore nylon and I've mentioned this in the past on the delivery side the pump pulses and if you use a hose it absorbs the pulses and you don't get the little the, the squirts now now when you're running your hose although this is fairly substantial I always like to put it in conduit. Now, um, in the particular install, I'm running it from the fuel tank over the top of the fuel tank and to the side of the, the motorhome. Probably not long, maybe, I don't know, a metre and a half, perhaps, is the distance. 
but I still like to put it in, in conduit. I've done mine and put this in electrical conduit, but you could use a little bit of garden hose and put it in there so you've got some protection. On the delivery side, this hard nylon, it's also very important that you, you put it in some sort of some sort of conduit. Now here again, you know, you can put it, this, it won't go into here, but you could put it in some, say, um, six millimetre fuel hose. You could put it through a bit of garden hose. But um, what I've done in this particular install is I've gone and bought some vinyl tubing. <laughs> now here, here comes the exception. This is six millimetre vinyl tubing. But instead of measuring the tubing on the outside, it's measured on the inside. So this is one of the exceptions. And uh, I don't know why these people can't get their act together. It's a bit like TVs. You know, no, no remote is the same. You, you cannot get a remote that's got the similar, similar features and they're all different. And I guess, you know, these people don't get their act together. So they break the rules and, and uh, you know, tubing is not tubing and hose is not hose. But anyway, that's digressing. So in this particular install, what I've done, um, I've taken, I've got this six millimetre vinyl tubing and I've run the, the hard um, um, nylon tubing fuel hose inside it and the install on this, um, probably about, um, oh, it's be about six metres I think I've had, had, to, had to run it through. Now if you stretch this out and you put a little bit of um, soap or detergent on here, you can push the whole lot through so it goes through nice and, nice and easily. The reason I like that um, with this clear tube is that when I'm testing the thing and I'm f on the first startup, I can see the little dosing bubbles come through and I can see that the fuel is running through because it, it, in this install it's a long way from the pump to the heater. So I can see the little dosing bubbles come through. I could have just as easily put it into a bit of garden hose and give it protection because it's mounted up on, on the inside of the framework of the, of the, the chassis of the motorhome. And if I had a, a little bit of tubing at the end, I could still see the bubbles come through at the beginning and at, at the start, I suppose. But it's purely a personal choice of how you want to go, and, um, but you need to put protection on it. And whether you use you know, this, whether you use this, is, is purely up to you. Okay, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the uh, hose clamps. Now your kit will come with hose clamps. These are to bolt on the exhaust onto the heater and onto the muffler and also the combustion air intake hose um, onto the heater and then onto your, um, your air filter or your silencer if you take one of those. Now a few things to look out for. You will get them, they'll come in different ways. Now. This one here is a stainless steel clamp. This one here is marketed as a stainless steel clamp. But what you'll find is that this part here on so-called stainless steel clamps is not. So this is what they call a marine grade hose clamp and it's all stainless steel. So a stainless steel band and a stainless steel worm drive. This one here sold in a hardware shop as a stainless steel clamp has a stainless steel band but the worm drive mechanism is just mild steel and it's plated and you can tell them they're a goldy colour whereas this one here, all, it's all stainless steel and it, it looks all the same. Now the problem, the problem with these, particularly in a marine environment or if you're mounting them under the, under the vehicle where you're going to get um, you know, rain and splash and road, road salt and whatever, this will rapidly rust up and you won't be able to get these off now, as an example, I took one of these and I just put it out on the garbage bin out in the weather and this is what's happened in just two weeks. So it started to rust up already in just two weeks and, you know, it won't be long before this, this whole mechanism is totally rusted up and you won't be able to undo this clamp. Now, these are the ones that are supplied for the, for the, um, the fuel hose these are the ones that are supplied for the, um, for the uh, exhaust pipe and everything. And, and here again, see how this one here, so-called um, clamp, stainless clamp, is actually mild steel. And see here, that's mild steel, it's plated. Where this one here, not only has got the stainless clamp, but this is also, and the screw mechanism and the screw is stainless steel. 
this is this here is also two weeks out in the weather and uh, it doesn't take long you know with with a bit of weather on them to start to corrode and rust them up all right so if you can do it that way now when you come to joining the hard nylon like this to the fuel tank and to the, the heater you can't you can't just join it like that so what happens is the with the with your kit it will come with these short joining hose parts and here again I'll just go over it you need to be careful they'll come with two types now and you'll you will come with the heater with two types of hard nylon it'll come with this one which is a four millimeter tube which is, means it's four millimeter on the outside and they also come with this one which is five millimeter tube so it's five millimeter on the outside but the bore is still a two millimeter bore now you you can measure the outside with a vernier like such but you can't measure the inside so what I do is I normally get a um, um, you know drill bit and then I can put them in so that's that's two millimeter and it slides in and two millimeter and it slides in so I know that the bore at those at two millimeter um, 2.5 millimeter won't go in now when you get your kit it will come with these joiners now this here creates some of the issues that, that I've, I've come across now they come with different different joiners if your kit comes with this two millimeter hard bore nylon delivery tube then you need to make sure that your, your joiner hose is smaller um, than the four millimeter on the outside so this is four millimeter on the outside two millimeter ball this one is five millimeter so here are the two different ones so this one here is this one here is four millimeter and this one here is 3.5 millimeter so this one here is too big for this hose so this is four millimeter that's four millimeter it slides in too easy and when you clamp it you won't get a good clamp and I'll come on to this a bit later you're likely to get small weepage and then you'll, you'll, you'll have intermittent troubles with your diesel. It won't run on a low level, so it won't run at uh, 1.6 hertz. So run for a while, then stop, and your people people will be complaining, oh, it won't run, it starts and stops and starts and stops. This is probably one of the reasons. So if you have four millimeter hard nylon, you have to go smaller than four millimeter um, joining tube. So this is 3.5. Now, here again, it's hard to push it in so if you if you can just push that in it's this here is too is too big so you need to put this in hot water put a bit of soap on here and then push it in so I can't push that one in there but I can easily slide it in and out of here no trouble at all now if they've done it right what they'll do is if you've got this this is five millimeter tube then it's quite okay to go inside four millimeter hose because it's hard again so I'll have to heat it up to be able to push that all the way in all right now another point on these these hose clamps talk a little bit more about the uh, hose clamps now you can get two types that will come with the heater or you can buy them separately you get the worm drive one and you get this type of hose clamp now I particularly like to use this type of hose clamp on the fuel line and the reason for this is if you look at these hose clamps here this part here has a very flat area under here see this area is flat and when you clamp it up 
you can squash the bottom of the, the hose, so you squash the bottom of the hose flat and you can allow a seepage area. Whereas this type of hose clamp, see how it's it comes in and it's got the, the round bit around here and so like here and it gives a much more rounded uh, pressure on the on the um, on the hose the only issue that you'll have is you cannot get these in stainless steel or I haven't been able to find them in stainless steel whereas this type here can come in stainless steel but the downside is that this flat bit here and you, you're not getting a nice clean joint around the hose so I prefer to take the risk and occasionally squirt these with WD-40 when you do your normal service of your motor vehicle or whatever it is, your oil change. Just give this a squirt with um, WD-40 and when you clamp it up, you'll get a nice, you'll get a nice even clamp. So you get a nice clamp around, a nice round clamp and not flat area on the top here. So you won't get this flat area here. All right. Um, just got recapping. If you're using for your um, the rest of it, you know the the stainless steel exhaust, the exhaust and everything, just use the stainless steel. Or if you can get it, it's worth your while to go to the marine shop and buy all stainless steel hose clamps. Now some of the heaters do actually come with all stainless steel hose clamps, but most of them come with these pretend stainless steel with the stainless steel band, but with the the mild steel worm drive and um, bolt on it. Okay, when they um, drop the tank out to put in a new fuel sender unit, I, I suggested to Jen that they put in a pickup, but when they pulled the tank out, there was already a pickup, a separate pickup here. So I've just put a, a bracket on it, an angle on it, and I'll take the, the fuel line from here, and uh, I put it in a, a bit of um, electrical conduit to protect it, and where you take it from here is really up to you, and I'll show you what uh, what I've done. Okay, so I've brought the fuel line over here in the electrical conduit over the top, and I'll mount I'll mount the filter and the fuel pump here, and I'll put a, a turn off valve as well, so it'd be easy to just put your hand over underneath here and turn it off, and Instead of mounting it here into the part of the motorhome, I think this probably, I don't know, might be nine millimeter plywood. I'll actually make a bracket, so around these points here, I'll make a, a little L-shaped um, bracket out of half inch ply, and I'll mount the fuel pump, the filter, and the turn off valve to here. So one is it gives me uh, more noise insulation because it's I don't want it vibrating through here this panel here and it also gives me thicker to screw into it I'm not sure how thick this is this might maybe nine millimeter maybe six millimeter ply here now a lot of people ask why you just don't tee into the fuel line the truck fuel line and there's two main reasons first is a lot of vehicles have a um, a fuel pump a boost fuel pump this particular one has it on the outside and this is the one from the uh, VW crafter this has this here the whole thing goes inside the fuel tank and this is a submersible diesel fuel pump here this here is a return for the diesel and this here is a pickup diesel now if you take a t-piece on the outlet here the pump, when the pump's running, the engine's running, the pressure of the diesel here is enough to blow past the little seals in the, the dosing pump on your heater and you'll get leakage of diesel into your heater. And the other reason is, is if the engine is not running, the little dosing pump has a lot of difficulty and depending on where the, the vanes stop, it just can't suck up the diesel out through the, uh, the boost pump. So that is why you've got to put in a separate pickup on your diesel tank. Okay, I've made a little L-shaped bracket out of 12 millimeter ply. I'll mount the, um, the dosing pump here. I'll mount the filter 
here and I'll mount the, the shut off valve here. I've cut two slots in the plywood so I can run a, um, a Utilux clamp through there and, and um, strap on the, um, the fuel shut off valve. I'll just give it a coat of paint now and uh, I can then I can mount it. I'll come back. Okay, here's my mounting um, a bit of plywood. So it's a 12 millimeter plywood. I cut it in a bit of an L shape just to, because underneath where I'm going to mount it, there's a couple of bolts coming through. Otherwise, I probably could have just a square uh, mounting block. This gives me a good place to mount it. Um, underneath the vehicle, there's a um, an aluminium base on the on the um, the wall. And I don't want to mount to the aluminium. One is it's pr pretty thin, and um, two, it can send the vibrations through the aluminium. When I put this on, I will I'll run some a bead of um, sealant around it as well as put the screws in, so it'll give some insulation and isolation. With the fuel hose, um, I always use four millimeter normal fuel hose, and it comes from the fuel tank through the on off switch, through the filter, and then onto the fuel pump. I haven't connected this up yet because I will prime it from here and prime this so this fuel filter is totally full. You can prime it with a little pump here, but it takes thousands of strokes to fill this. And what you're doing is you're running this now without any lubrication, so I don't like to do that at all. I always like to pre-prime up to here. When this is full, I'll just hook it up to here. Okay, I've mounted my um, my bracket. I've glued it on as well as screwed it. Um, this is a thin aluminium plate here. Now, here comes the um, the fuel hose. I've run it through with some electrical conduit to give it some protection. Come down here. I haven't put it on yet. I've got to soak it in some hot water to get it right in here onto the onto the nipple goes through the on off valve here through the filter through the pump and then it'll go down to the uh, the heater at the back of the motorhome the pump here is just underneath where the step is so it's no effort to lean down and just turn the turn it on or off and um, I don't like to leave fuel on on any of these items you know it's always good to have an, an on off tap in your line somewhere Okay, I'll continue on and I'll come back later. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to prime this up here. Um, I've just got a little bit of um, the nylon fuel hose and uh, an end on it. And I've been doing it this way since I was a kid. <laughs> so. Okay, I've primed it all up now. The fuel filter is full of diesel. Um, I've pushed it in there. Now I've been doing it. <laughs> I've been sucking it, prime sucking it since I was a kid. But you don't do it that way. You you got to. You can use a um, an outboard primer or um, you know some sort of little pump. But I advise don't use the the uh, dosing pump to prime it. You can do it by pushing the two buttons on the controller. But as I said before, it's running up here thousands of times just to fill this this um, bowl here. All right, here we've got the outlet. We'll come back. So I put the um, the tap and the fuel pump on this inside this wall here, so I can just re reach under and turn the tap on and off. I run the fuel line, the outlet fuel line, along the side here up over the top of the wheel well and down and then it goes up through here so there you can see it has started to run it yet it's not all clamped up yet okay I've connected up all the fuel hose so I've got the the hose coming in from the fuel tank here through the on off valve through the filter into the pump and on the outside of the pump I've got the hard nylon 2mm bore delivery fuel line. It goes through here, this protective vinyl 
coating. Here is the wiring for the fuel pump. Now, I've connected my my manual dosing thing up. Just a simple switch because it's got about four meters to go. I could turn the heater on and off, but it'll run a few times before I can get the heater the uh, fuel through. So I'll just turn the fuel line on and I'll manually manually dose it. And I'll keep doing that until I see it come out down the back. Okay, it's taken a, a lot of manual clicks here before the diesel started to come out down the back there. It's probably got about a four, four and a half meters of uh, run. But if I did it with the um, connected up the heater, it'd have to go through quite a number of cycles before the diesel got to the heater itself. So it's much better to do it manually here. Then I know that I've got diesel right to the end there. So the pump should start up on the first or second cycle now. I'll take my manual one out and I'll put back the main one now. Okay, now I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, the wiring harness. Here's the wiring harness that came with the heater. I've cut it off here um, for both the power lead and for the fuel pump because I've had to lengthen both of them about uh, four meters. Now the first thing that you must be aware of is when you increase the length of the, um, the power lead or the fuel pump, you must go up in wire size. This here is the wire that came with the uh, heater. It's really on the borderline. You know, we're looking here about 1.6 millimeter diameter in the wire. And I've gone up here to 2.1 millimeter. So I've gone up significantly in size because I've been running the extra length. If you don't go up in size, you're going to have trouble with your heater. The, your, the glow plug won't get enough voltage, it won't light up enough, and you'll have starting troubles. Now, you can go and get a calculator if you want to know exactly what it is. So here, you can get them off the internet or you can get them as an app. And uh, make sure when you put it in, put in 12 volts or 12.3 volts or something like that. Don't put in, you can have, you can have it here at, um, you know, 13.8 um, volts, but you will never get that in a motorhome because what happens is that, uh, that might be fine when the engine's running, but in a motorhome when you're parked and, and free camping, you won't get that. Now you're gonna use 10 amps because that's what the, the glow plug will draw when it starts. Now the important thing that you need to know is the length. Now I said I've had to extend the, the wire harness four meters. You must measure the out and back. So in other words, I have to put in here eight meters. This wants it in feet, so roughly four meters is roughly um, 25 feet. So I'll put in 25 feet. Now you can have the, the voltage drop. 5% is probably acceptable here. And then it'll tell you these ones here are okay. These ones here not accept acceptable. The other point you need to be aware of, as I said, this wire here is uh, 2.1 millimeter. But when you buy automotive wire, they measure on the outside of the insulation, not the actual wire diameter as well. So here, this here is um, call, calling itself five millimeter wire, but it's five millimeter on the insulation. And it's probably, you know, maybe, um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably only, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be two millimeter. It'd be less than that, probably 1.6 millimeter in diameter there. 1.1 millimeter. Okay. Now I've made a little distribution, power distribution box. I've, I haven't cleaned up all the wires. I'll mount this on the back wall underneath the seat. I put a switch in here because it's fairly important. I like to have a switch in because if you're not using the heater for a while, you need to be able to turn it off. Otherwise the, um, the controller will always 
the controller will be always on with the LEDs on it will always be drawing current from your batteries you don't want this switch mounted with the main switch on the on the caravan or motorhome because if somebody turns it off accidentally or, or on purpose and the heater hasn't gone through its slowdown cycle which can be take five minutes after you've um, turned the heater off you're going to seriously overheat the heater you won't get a fire but you will certainly burn out the ECU so on the the um, fuel pump side I've also increased the wire size this only draws the fuel pump only draws about less than one amp so it's not critical to go up like here where you're going to be drawing 10 amps when you're heating the glow plug the other thing that's important as I think I've mentioned before it's important to have a fuse in these any wiring now the fuse protects the wire it does not protect the heater now I'm mounting this, I'm running this along the side of the motorhome, I'm, I'm putting it in conduit, and, but I'm mounting it onto the, the metal sidewall and underneath the chassis. So it's important I have a fuse in case it, there's, you know, what, it rubs through or something like that, a stone chips or whatever. And you don't want to short it out and then you'll start, the, the wires will burn and you get a, a fire. So I put a 15 amp fuse right at the battery for this power lead. Now when you have the the fuel pump lead it's also going along underneath the, the vehicle even though it's in conduit you don't want it shorting out you know the two wires rubbing together or whatever so you need a fuse in that but the power coming from or going to the um, the fuel pump comes from the controller so I put a fuse in here up this end before the wire goes down through the floor so if there's any chafing in this wire it will blow this fuse and this one I put I think a 3 or a 5 amp I'll put a 3 or a 5 amp fuse in here so you need to put the fuse at the start of the wire so just recapping on the power lead we want the fuse close to the battery on the fuel pump because the, the power comes from the the controller in the heater you want it close to the heater or close to the the um, well this distribution box okay I'm going to test run it now I'll, I'll double check everything I'll double check the wire I'll test run it and then I'll put it and mount it but I, I want to just take check it before I mount it all up and make sure it works okay I have to bring the wire through and the um, so the, both the 12 volt power lead and the um, the two core flex that goes to the fuel pump has to come through the floor here now you just can't cut a hole and bring the wire through you you have to seal up the core so I've cut a 30 millimeter hole I'll put this um, PVC pipe I'll sand it up and I'll seal it in with some uh, good good um, epoxy glue because the core is polystyrene you have to use something like epoxy you can't use the solvent based adhesive because it'll eat out the polystyrene so the best product of all is a good um, one-to-one -one mix epoxy glue I'll put it around here and I'll seal it in there like that all right I'll come back what I'm doing now is I'm sealing up I'm sealing up um, the hole where the conduit came through I'd like to use this Sally's all clear or Fuller's maxi seal for this and one of the advantage of it is it's, it's a really good um, sealant adhesive and you can tool it so a bit of metho on your finger you can make a nice sort of tooling edge and when it dries you can you can paint over it right okay I've um, double checked the wiring to the battery I've um, installed the fuse now I'll come up Turn the main switch on here. We've got power to the controller. All right, let's start it up and see if it works. Now, it'll take a while to go through its startup process, so I'll just let it run up and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm just checking on the exhaust here for smoke. Um, because it's running actually it's running very clean on the first startup and that is because 
I pumped the fuel here through right up to the heater with the manual priming um, switch. If I didn't, these heaters smoke badly when they first start up because you're getting a, an imperfect burn on it. I haven't mounted this up yet. I'll, um, I'll fix that up after I do the test run. But so far it's all looking good. Okay, I've mounted everything now. I've double checked the wiring. Now remember the wire power for the heater comes directly from the battery, not through the, um, the house system or, or the main circuit panel. Two reasons. One is you don't want to turn this heater off while it's still running because you'll overheat it. And two, if you run it through the main distribution box, you run a voltage pro drop problem. If somebody turns the lights on or fans on, then the voltage coming to here will drop. The other thing is I set it like a switch in here. So you can turn the heater off, the main power to the heater off, which will, otherwise you've always drawing current from the ECU and the controller. If it's a, uh, the manual controller is probably not so bad, but this type of controller here, the LED type controller always has the lights on. And sometimes that can bother the people if it's on all the time. All right, I've double checked the wiring again. Make sure, because I've cut the wiring and lengthened it, I've just got to make sure that the polarity is correct. I've done that, I've put the fuse in right at the battery. So we'll turn it on and see what happens. Okay, all good there. Now, should start up. There we go. It'll take a little while to get up and running, so I won't waste people's time, I'll come back. Well, we're running um, very nice there. We're running 4.9, running five hertz. Putting about 100 degrees Celsius there coming out of the vent. Outside it is, um, single figures about eight degrees celsius and inside it is very <laughs> nice and toasty i'll just run it down now onto a low speed i'm down at two hertz that will drop the noise and still give um some good heat into the um into the cabin here right the heater is installed underneath the um the seat here and we'll do a, um, a final test run. First point, there's the outlet. You can put a, a T piece in and have a number of different outlets if you desire. One critical point that I can't stress enough is that the outlet must not be able to shut off. Now, sometimes you can buy these outlets that you can turn them off. That's fine if you've got a number of outlets, you can turn one off and you get redirected, but one outlet must not be able to be shut off. If you do, you will overheat the heater and you cause dangerous situation. All right, now I've got the, the on off switch or the master switch for the heater mounted out of the way under the seat and recessed. So hopefully it can't be accidentally turned off and uh, which will cause trouble with the heater shutdown mechanism. We'll turn it on. Oh, a bit. And there we go. Now originally I was going to mount it under the seat here, but it would have meant lifting up the seat, putting a hand in and turning it off. Um, I thought that might have been a little bit of an issue. If you've got kids on board, then perhaps that's a way to do it because you don't want the kids fussing around here and while the heat is running, turn that switch off. All right, we've got power to the controller and let's start it up. Now it'll take a few minutes to get up and running, so I won't waste time, I'll come back. Okay, the heater's been running for about 15 minutes now at this um, very low speed. This is 1.6 hertz, the lowest speed it will run at. But it's still putting out 70 degrees Celsius of uh, air temperature. The reason I've been giving it a, a good run at this low speed is it'll identify any potential or actual leaks in the fuel system. If you have any minute leaks or if you have um, weepage or if you have a, a, say an air bubble in the system, 
the heater does not get enough diesel at 1.6 hertz and it will turn itself off so if you find that you can't run at this low speed you've got some issue with the, the fuel line on the diesel delivery side okay as I said it goes very quiet at this particular speed and uh, it's much easier for me to hear the the um, fuel pump ticking now I'll run it up to maximum speed and I'll give it a run at that that'll also help clean out any um, carbon that might be building up on the low speed run and I'll identify any issues such as overheating issues on a, on a high speed run it'll take a few minutes to run up and I'll come back in a bit well there we are running at 5.5 uh, hertz the um, maximum speed for that, that controller it's uh, running very hot it's, it's only 9 degrees outside here in, in um, my place but it's uh, well we're putting in you know, 110 degrees so it's really at the maximum it goes much hotter than that it'll probably shut down from overheat so I'll run it down a little bit I'll run it down to 5 hertz I'll run it down to, I'll run it down to um, 4 hertz let it cool down for a bit and then I'll shut it off okay the heater has turned itself off so it's run through its cool down cycle and switched off now if you don't have a master switch these LEDs will continue to light and the timer will continue so I've been running here 15 minute, 50 minutes on the uh, on the test run so we'll turn it off on the master switch down here but wherever you mount this switch you need to make sure it can't be switched off accidentally or somebody thinks it's a light switch or whatever I initially was going to mount it up here but Jen would have to lift the seat up and uh, every time she wanted to get in and add it so I've mounted it down here and it's um, out of the way it's recessed so it's not flush and um, hopefully nobody thinks it's a light switch and, and turns it off all right I hope this is a little bit of help to those who are going to install one of these Chinese diesel heaters themselves and thank you for watching